In this video, we are gonna be building the login view and also the sign up view of our application. So here if you observe, I have an entire boilerplate code that flutter create command gives us and we won't be needing it. So first thing first, let's create a proper folder structure. So here I will be having a folder called as core. It shall be consisting of all of our providers that are chain notifiers and also all the services. After that, we shall be creating a new folder called as meta. The meta folder shall be consisting all the presentation of our application that are all the views and widgets. And also we are going to be having a new folder called as app. This folder shall be consisting of entire shared code that is the common colors, the common textiles and everything between our application. Alright, so once we have built this, let's remove the entire boilerplate code from here. Uh, just like this, easy. And here I shall be creating a new stateless widget. So here let's name the following widget to be my app. Instead of having a container, I will be having a material app. And here let's have the property of debug show check mode banner to false. Just like this. And also we are gonna be having our entire theme. Under this theme, we are gonna be having a new theme data. Just like this. And first of all, we shall be requiring here a new font family. And we are gonna be using font family to be Montessera. So here let's go under our entire project folder. Under shopx. And here I will be creating a new folder called as assets. Under this, let's have one more folder for all the assets, <laughs> that is all for all the fonts. So yeah, let's have a new folder for fonts and one more for all the images, just like this. So here under my font, I can simply drag and drop a new font. So I'm gonna be copying the following asset of Montessera.ttf. The following font shall be under the description box, you must check that out. And once we have got this, let's go under our PowerSpeaker.tml file and write the entry for the following font. Cool, so let's go at the top and paste our entry here. Just like this, press Ctrl and us. Alright, so after having the following entry of our font, let's go under our font family. Let's add the following font here of Montessorat. Just like this, format document first. Cool, so after having the following theme, let's move out of the following theme and have a new home to our entire material app. So here, let's have a new home. So for having the particular home, let's go under our meta folder, just right here. And here I will be creating a new folder called as views. Also, let's have one more folder for all the widgets. Why not? So under my views, first of all, I will be creating one more subfolder for authentication. And under auth, I will be creating a new file called as login view dot dot sign up view dot dot easy as this. So once we have created both of them, first of all, let's work over our sign up view. So yeah, first of all, let's have a new stateless widget known as sign up view. And instead of a container, let's return a new scaffold. Cool. So now let's go under our main.dart file. And after having all the authentication, let's create a new splash screen. So yeah, let's have a new folder of splash screen. And under this folder, I will be creating a new file called as splash view. Cool. So let's work over our splash view.dart first of all. So yeah, let's have a new stateful widget. And here let's have a new name to it of splash view. Under this, let's return a new scaffold. Go under our home and let's import our following file. And now let's start working over our splash screen. But before working over our splash screen, let's go under our app folder. And here we need a new file for our all the shared things. So here let's have a new folder of shared. And under our shared, I will be having a new file of colors. So let's paste on our following file of colors. And similarly, we shall be requiring some dimensions. So I will be pasting my dimensions here. Now you can observe I have some custom dimensions for spacing between our entire application. And also under my colors, I have some different colors, which will be some constant colors. Now don't worry, you will be getting both of the files under the description box. Check them out. So yeah, let's have a color of dark color. After having the following dark color, let's have a new body to be a center. And under center, I will be having a new child to be a column. So here under this, let's have all the children that we shall be requiring. First thing first, let's have the alignments for our column. So here let's have main axis alignment for a center one. And also we shall be requiring a cross axis alignment. So here let's have cross axis alignment for a center. Just like this. Let's go under our children. And under our children, we are gonna be requiring only a single text. So here let's have a new text of our app name, which is shopx. Just like this, let's have some more styling. So after having the following splash view, we shall be requiring a method to navigate the following splash screen to the next screen. And for that purpose, we are gonna be using a timer. So here you shall be simply importing a new timer from Dart Async. And first of all, it shall be requiring a duration. So here let's have a new duration. Another duration, let's have four seconds. Of two seconds shall be okay. 
and also we shall be requiring a new callback so here let's have a new callback to our entire timer and under our callback i will be having a new navigator so here let's have navigator dot push replacement and under our context and new root we shall be having a new different transition so for that purpose let's go under our pathpay.ml file and let's have a new dependency of page transition let's go back and here under our following context let's have a new page transition under our page transition we shall be requiring a child and also a type so first of all we shall be having a new child to be a sign up view so here let's have sign up view and also we shall be requiring a type of transition so here let's have a new type after removing the following semicolon so here let's have a new type of page transition from left to right or right to left according to you so after having our following splash screen let's design our login view and also our sign up view so for that purpose let's go under our sign up view and here along with a scaffold we shall be requiring some different properties so first thing first let's have a new property of resize to avoid bottom inset to be false just like this let's have a new background color under a case of a dark color and also we are going to be requiring a new body and under a body let's have a new column as our main body let's have alignments and under our children first of all we shall be requiring spacing from top so here let's have somewhat spacing from top of size of 3 under a vertical box and also a combined one of vertical size of 2 just like this and here we are gonna be requiring a new container so here let's have a new container for a top view and now what I am gonna be doing for judging where our dimensions are going I am gonna be giving here a new color so here let's have a new color dot red one just like this here let's have a new child to be a row and here we are going to be having a new children to be icon button so here under icon button we shall be requiring some different icons from the native flutter icons that is provided to us so for that purpose let's move under our perfect.ml file and get the dependency of eva icons and also we are going to be requiring the package of font of some flutter so here let's have font cool so press ctrl and s and both of them shall be downloaded Cool, so under icon, first of all, I shall be having a new icon from Eva icons. So for that purpose, I will be having a Eva icons dot iOS for a backward, just like this. Let's have some color to it. So under a color, let's have our white color from our shared file. And on pressing over it, nothing shall be happening for now. So yeah, let's leave it for empty one, uh, just like this, format document first. And after having our following cute looking container, we can go down. And let's have some what spacing of size of 4 so here let's have spacing of size of 4 and after that let's have a new container so here let's have a new container under this let's have a new child to be a column for our all the text so here under our column first of all let's have alignments so here let's have all the children so under our children first of all we shall be requiring a new text for header for welcoming the user let's have some what styling to it Cool, so after having the following text, we shall be requiring one more text, that is two more different text. So what I'm going to be doing is co simply copying the following text and paste it here, that we have simply written here. So format document first. So after having all the text thing, we can come out of our entire container. But here, let's have a color to it. Why not? For seeing all of our dimensions. So here, let's have a new color. And also we are going to be needing some spacing. So here, let's have some more spacing. And also we are going to be needing a new container. So here let's have a new container under our container let's have a new child to be a column so here let's have a column under this let's have all the children so under our children of our column we shall be requiring three different text fields so what we are going to be doing is creating a common method for all the text styles let's name the following thing to be stylish text field just like this and under this first of all it shall be requiring a new string which will be a text of our text field and the following text shall be simply the hint text that we need to provide and also we are going to be requiring a text editing controller to be a text editing controller so under our text field first of all let's have a new controller to be the following text editing controller just like this after that we shall be requiring somewhat styling for the overview text so for that purpose let's have somewhat styling let's have somewhat decoration to it as well so here yeah, let's have a new and under input decoration first of all we shall be requiring a new suffix icon so here yeah, let's have a new suffix icon under our suffix icon let's have a new icon button and here on pressing over it nothing shall be happening for now so let's leave the following thing to be empty and also we shall be requiring a new icon here from eva icons so for here let's have the package dependency of eva icons of backspace 
just like this let's have some what color to it to be a text color just like this format document first and here we are gonna be having a new border so here let's have a new border to be new input border just like this and here first of all let's have border side to be a border side for a none one cause we don't want any border after that let's have some what border radius so here let's have a border radius so here let's have border radius of all it shall be requiring somewhat radius so here let's have a radius which is going to be constant so here let's have a radius dot circular and we shall be requiring a radius of 15 so let's have here a 15 one so after having our border we shall be requiring some different properties of field to be true and also we are going to be having somewhat hint style that is hint text so under our hint text we shall be having our text that we have provided under our arguments after that we shall be having somewhat hint style under our hint style let's have somewhat text style and after having everything let's have a fill color under case of background color which is our custom color so what we can really do is copy the following thing from here let's move under our column and first of all let's have somewhat vertical spacing so here let's have a vertical size box and also our stylish text field so first of all we shall be having here a hint of name so here let's have a name and also we are going to be requiring a new controller so for having those we can go at the top and here let's have somewhat controllers so first of all we shall be requiring here a name controller we shall be equal to a new text editing controller just like this cool so now let's go at the bottom and here after having our text let's have first of all a name controller so what i am gonna doing is copy the following thing and paste it here from here and have somewhat vertical spacing from bottom so here let's have vertical size box of 4 just like this and after having our entire size box we shall be also requiring a way through that we shall be simply navigating the user to the next screen over simply for so for that purpose we are gonna be having a new container under our container let's have a new child under a center so let's have here a new center under this let's have a new column first thing first let's have all the alignments so i am gonna be having the alignments here just right here after having this let's have all the children under our column so under our children first of all we are gonna be having a new rich text and under our rich text first of all we are gonna be having a new text which shall be under a type of a text pan so here let's have a new text pan under this first of all let's have all the children and the following children are gonna be under a type of text pan as well so first of all let's have a fir our first text pan so here let's copy let's write our text pan and under this it shall be requiring a new text so here let's have a new text of already have an account a space and also we are gonna be having somewhat styling just like this so after having the following text pan let's copy our following text pan and from here and paste it one more time but here let's have somewhat different text to it so here i am going to be having a new text of login and here let's have a new font weight for a bold one just like this so here we shall be having a new property of recognizer we shall be simply recognize the gesture over it so for that purpose i am going to be having a new property that is a method of tap gesture recognizer and here we shall be simply append the following thing with on tap just like this that we have written here and the following on tap shall be returning us a new method so here under a case of on tap we shall be simply navigating the user to the next screen so for that purpose let's copy the navigator from here and paste it here but let's import everything that we shall be requiring so here on tapping over login the user shall be navigated to the next screen of login view so here let's have a new view of login view let's have a new button for simply signing in under our entire application so now let's come out of our entire rich text and here let's have vertical spacing of vertical size box of size 2 and after that let's have a container as well so here let's have a new container and under a container let's have a defined width of 300 and also we are going to be having somewhat height of 50 just write this let's have somewhat box decoration and after having the following box decoration we shall be having a new child under a center so here let's have a new child under a center which will be a new text of sign up just like this format document first cool so once everything is done from here let's get started with creating a login view for our entire gesture detector so for that purpose we can go under our login view and what i am gonna be doing is simply copy the entire sign up view and paste everything here but we can go at the top and let's rename it to login view let's copy the name and let's import the following login view from here easy peasy 
So once we have done this, let's go under our login view and under our login view, there will be some more changes. So under our login view, first of all, let's remove the name from here. We won't be requiring to submit the username again and again. So once we have removed that name, let's remove our vertical size box and the text field as well. And here I can simply say a new thing or simply don't have an account. We ca you can simply sign up from here just like this. And here instead of login view, let's navigate the user to sign up view. So here let's have a new view of sign up view. Format document first. Let's import it. Cool. So once we have done this, let's go at the bottom. And also we are going to be having a new button of login just like this. So instead of header, we shall be having some more different text. And also we are going to be having a new thing under our welcome to the party. So let's remove everything from here and have welcome back. Also let's have some different property here as well. Just right here. So now let's press F5 and load our entire application once. But before that purpose, but before that, let's go under our Android, under our application, under our source under a build.gradle file and here I am going to be having a new property of multidesk. So here let's have multidesk enabled to be true format document first and now let's test it out. Alright we don't need this let's go under our login view let's open our emulator and press F5. Now this thing may take some time so let's wait for it. Alrighty so our application is up and loaded and there are some changes that we need to do. No worries let's go first of all under our sign up view. And under our sign up view, first of all, we shall be requiring, all right, let's move it here so that everything will be properly managed. Cool. So first thing first, we can go at the top and remove some of the colors that we have predefined. So under our color, first of all, let's remove the red color. Cool. So also let's do one thing, have somewhat less spacing of size one. Cool. So after this, we can go at the bottom, but first of all, let's go at the column and refactor it under a padding and here let's have padding of symmetric. And under, under our symmetric, let's have a horizontal one. So under horizontal, let's have of 20. Let's try it out. Cool. So it is looking more awesome. And now let's go at the bottom at our green color container. Let's remove it from here. Cool. So this is looking more awesome and more clean. And here under our already have a login button. We shall be having an underline to our entire text. So yeah, let's have text decoration. I guess it is decoration for a text decoration dot underline all right here it is press enter all right but we don't need it here so let's remove it from here and let's go under our login and paste it here cool so we have our login button here what we can also do is increase the amount font size of it to 20 press enter all right 20 is quite big let's make it of 18 cool it is looking more awesome but we can also make it of 17 cool so now after pressing our login we are now navigated to our entire login page and after pressing our sign up, we are navigated to our sign up page. So now let's go under our login view and let's make some changes here as well. So as usual, first of all, let's have somewhat padding to it. Before that, let's make it of one and let's remove the red color. Let's remove the green color. Why not? And let's go at the bottom and here under our sign up view here. So yeah, let's have a new decoration of text decoration or underline. And also we are going to be having somewhat font size of 17 press control and us. Cool. So this is looking more awesome and more cool. So we are now created our entire view. So now after reloading our entire application once. Cool. So we have our logo of ShopX and after two seconds, we are now navigated to our next screen, which is our sign up screen. And also if the user don't have any account, he can log in from our login view just like this. Or also he can sign up from this page. So in this way we have successfully created our entire sign up view, our splash screen and also our login view. So in the next tutorial we are gonna be working over our backend for our authentication purpose. So with that said if you have loved this tutorial please hit that like button it will be awesome. I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.